If you are in your low 600s and SAT math and want to scale it to mid 700s, this video is for you. I've been tutoring a lot of students for the past couple of months for the August uh, 2024 SAT. And one thing which I found common is that although they think they knew how to use Desmos, but they didn't. Uh, and if you also think that you know how to use Desmos to its fullest, watch this video till the end and I'm quite sure it will make a difference to your score. Uh, we are going to solve about 15 questions which were earlier asked in SAT purely using Desmos without even touching our pen and paper. So let's get started. All right, so in this question, we have to find how many solutions does the system of equations have. We are given two equations. So guys, I'm not saying that you cannot do this manually. The, 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 the intention is uh, using Desmos, you can save time and increase the accuracy. So if they're asking for the number of solutions, don't you think that we are looking for the point of intersection? So all we're gonna do is plug in 2x minus uh, y equal to three in equation number, uh, you know, line number one. And in the next one, I'm gonna put 4x minus y equal to three as well. And all I'm looking for is the point of intersection which is pretty much what I have over here. So 0 comma 3, x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is minus 3. I'm not interested in the solution. I'm interested in the number of solutions. So clearly the answer is exactly one solution because two equations, two linear equations uh, can have one solution, no solution if they are parallel and infinite solutions if they are overlapping. Also guys, one quick tip. What if you want to change the color of these two graphs? So you go on this, hover your cursor over on this, make a left click for about two seconds, and this option will pop in front of you. If you want to change the type of line, you can make it dotted, even more dotted uh, or solid. You can change the colors from here as well. Let's say, uh, I mean, I have seen that sometimes Desmos by default takes same color for both the equations and probably you are unable to distinguish. So if that happens with you, this is what you're gonna do and change the color uh, as per what you like. All right, guys, let's move ahead to the next question. Uh, uh, here we need to find the roots of the equation. Now, the first thing which you should know that in Desmos, you will not really get an exact solution uh, as in in the form of radical, just the way it is given in the options. But it doesn't mean that we, we cannot use Desmos, right? We can still use Desmos, but we have to make sure that out of the four options, we reverse engineer the four options as well in decimals using decimals. Okay, the first thing is, uh, and I want you to see the mistake which I'm going to do right now because I have seen students doing the same mistake. Uh, I'm gonna put the equation just the way it looks like in the decimals. Uh, sorry, in the question. So this is how it looks like. Now, the problem here is you are getting two vertical lines. I mean, that is, is kind of confusing, no? Because we know that every quadratic is a parabola. Why am I not even getting a parabola here? So guys, what you need to remember is accept a linear equation, which we just did in the as the first question where you plugged an equal to sign. Do not put an equal to sign in any other equation except linear. If you will not put equal to sign, you will get a parabola. I'm going to show you how. And if you do not want to put an equal to sign, obviously you want to move these guys 2x plus 3 over on the left side so that it becomes, uh, uh, so that it comes on the left side. So it becomes minus 2x minus 3 and the right side is gone to 0. But like I said, I do not want to put equal to 0. So I'm just going to erase it. And now you can see that you have your nice and cozy parabola and you're looking for roots. Roots are these two. Like I said, unfortunately, the options are not adding up. Obviously, you can rule out option A because it's surely not two, a little more than two. Uh, but then you can type in the options one by one and see which one is adding up. For example, option B. So I'm gonna open this panel from here so that I get a square root option. Uh, I'm gonna put one minus square root symbol 11. 
negative 2.3 uh well not really it's negative 1.158 so i don't need this i'm gonna go on the next row i can just copy and paste right because remember sat is time sensitive so i've got to save time of typing as well i'm gonna copy i'm gonna paste it over here change one to one over two and change negative to positive 3.8 uh that that won't make the cut as well so i think the answer has to be option d because that's the only one left so i'm gonna copy this once again uh i'm gonna in fact i'm gonna place a division sign first so that uh, you know, I have a fraction, then I will go on the top and play, press control V. I'm going to come here, select uh, uh, a change negative to positive and make this to 2.15 bingo 2.15. That is my answer. So my answer is option D in this case. All right, guys, next question. Let's clear this up. All right, uh, if x is a solution to the given equation, then which of the following is a possible value of x plus y? Once again, something related to roots. So like I said, do not put an equal to sign, just put the entire expression which you are seeing over here and move all the right things over on the left side, change the sign and do not put equal to sign. Uh, they are saying that x is a solution of this, right? And what is a solution, guys? Solution is the x-intercept. There are two solutions of this. So they are saying that what is one of the possible value of x plus y? So now I'm looking for x plus y, but remember that x plus y, and notice carefully, all the options are positive. So don't you think I, I will not really take minus 5.5 as my root? Because minus 5.5 plus 5 is a negative number. And none of the options are negative, right? Um, so I'm going to place this negative 4.5 into, uh, uh, that, that is what I'm going to take as the value of x. So negative 4.5 plus 5. Five, that's what I'm looking for and now all the options are in fraction it's not in decimal so this is another learning for you guys that if you want to convert a rational number into a fraction and if it is a rational number on the left side of that bar you will get a P over Q form which you just have to click and the answer will convert into a rational number so clearly your answer is option A right let's move ahead uh, this question is about how to put a restricted domain in the decimals for example let's read the question so that looks a little different and difficult the graph in the x y plane of the equation above contains a point a comma b now if a is between negative one and one and what is a guys a is nothing but the x coordinate so they are saying that the above graph is only applicable when x is between minus 1 and 1. That's pretty cool. Which of the following is not a possible value of b? Not a possible value of b means not a possible value of y. All right. So I'm going to plug in the function as it is. It's okay if you don't want to plug in y. You can just plug in the expression as it is, x plus 1 and uh, x plus 2. And I'm pretty sure that is going to hold up fine even if you want to put in y equal to something. But uh, if you, uh, it's, uh, it's optional. I mean, it's up to you. So we are not going to put uh, y equal to here. It just looks, you know, cool as it is. Now, how to put a restricted domain, guys? Because you don't want this entire, because this is a polynomial, right? If you see, this is a spanned over the entire x, like going from negative infinity to infinity. Um, Oh, by the way, uh, I just used a zoom out tool, uh, just quick tip here, zoom out, zoom in, you know, I'll go on the settings uh, uh, later in, the, uh, in this video, I will also explore the settings option. And once you are, uh, let's say zoomed out, you're zoomed out, you have, you saw what you wanted to see, and you want to come back to the default view. So I have seen students hitting this plus again and again and trying to, you know, uh, come back to the default view. No need to do that, guys. Just press this home button or default viewport and you will come back to the default view. So that's just a quick tip for you. Now, how to um, how to uh, put a restricted domain here? So you put curly bracket, you put a curly bracket, right? 
then you put minus one then exactly you put the way it is it is being shown in the question so it's minus one less than equal to you know how to put a less than from uh, from keyboard and if you want to put equal to from the keyboard as well after putting the less than type the equal to sign in the keyboard so it will automatically turn into a less than equal to if you're not a big fan of using a keyboard Desmos gives you an option over here to put a less than equal to sign and x and less than equal to one voila this graph is now restricted within the domain of negative one and one both inclusive all they want to know is which of the following cannot be the value of y don't you think that any positive value is not allowed i cannot see any positive value right so don't you think the option should be d because zero is allowed there you go zero and negative two is definitely allowed and everything between zero and negative two y value is also allowed so one is definitely not allowed so our answer is option d all right guys next question simplifying functions although this is uh, straightforward i mean you can do this manually as well i don't think so it will take uh, much time if you guys have a solid foundation of algebra uh, one slash two but again how to use desmos purely for it so what you're going to do in such questions is that talk about simplifying an equivalent expression you type in the expression which is given in the question as it is right don't uh, simplify just do not simplify because calculator is going to do that for you so i'm going to type in as it is and this is the function which i'm going to get uh, well it's almost a straight line but it's not a straight line look at that there's a bump over here right it's not a straight line now i'm gonna type in options one by one and see which graph is overlapping with the question because that's what i need right if they are equivalent then their graphs must be equal now we have to be a little you know judicial over here you don't really have to plug in all the options blindly because take into account the time of typing right you want to you want to be a little smart over here so i think option a and b are not possible why is that because when i foil i will multiply x square with x cube which is x raised to 5 so my op my equation must have an x raised to 5 and fortunately the only option is option c so it looks like Desmos even, you know, that is not even required, but okay, just for the sake of uh, uh, elaborating this concept, because it's quite likely that you may get all the five options, all the four options having a fifth degree in it. Then you might have to, you know, obviously uh, take a little bit help from Desmos. But in this question, it will be just 12x raised to five plus 84x cubed minus 6x square minus 42 and you can see that obviously you just see one graph because they overlap how to verify that they are overlapping just click on any one graph to unhide look at that hide unhide uh, this is unhide uh, sorry this is hide unhide hide unhide hide so look at that they are overlapping so exactly this is my answer because they are overlapping you change this option to let's say option d x raised to six and you can clearly see that they are not overlapping i mean you don't see the violet one right now because the one part has been overlapped but if you un un uh, uh, if you hide this you can see that the violet one is only like this while the black one is like sort of like two branches over here it's not two branches it's a single function but it's like uh, it looks like there is something over here as well which is missing on the first one right so this is how we do this question let's move ahead this is a pretty straightforward question but there is a message which i want to give from this question uh, which i have seen students using desmos and then getting confused that none of the option is matching over here and what is that confusion let's find out i'm going to plug in sign 50 it gives me a value and now i'm going to plug in all the four options one by one to see which one is matching of course so what is cos of 50 nope that's not the answer what is cos of 40 nope that's not matching what is tan of 50 nope that's not matching as well what is sine of 40 nope that's not matching as well so why is that because the default unit of angle in desmos 
is radians and the question given is in degrees so how you got to change the you got to change the unit from radians to degrees and how you have to do that go in this settings option at the bottom look at that radians degrees switch that to degrees come back to the question cos 40 and sine 50 look at the values exact match right so your answer is cos 40 over here all right let's move ahead to the next question uh, absolute value functions again how to solve absolute value function so motive of pulling this question is uh, to make you understand that you can put an absolute value function as well uh, in the uh, in the test mode so once again avoid putting the equal to sign bring 25 over on the left side and how to put an absolute value guys so two times this is the symbol this is abs or absolute value so put an uh, click on it it will make the two bars for you then plug in 4 minus x then plus 3 absolute value of 4 minus x again and minus 25 what are you looking for you're looking for the solutions and the solutions are x intercepts and x intercepts there are two x intercepts minus one and nine uh, uh, by the way guys another tip for you right now if you uh, if you see it is not highlighting the point for you right it's not highlighting the x-intercept but the moment you click on it it will uh, it will highlight that point but still that uh, coordinate is not flashing continuously it's only when you hover over that or your cursor over that so if you want to make this permanent highlighted make a left click on it again so that it will stay there you know you don't have to uh, you don't have to move your cursor again and again so that's another tip for you they need a positive solution as clearly stated so the positive solution is of course x equal to 9 that is the answer all right let's move ahead to the next question so okay this is composite function and desmos is really really helpful in such questions all right a couple of tips here uh, desmos can recognize a function notation what i want to say over here is if you want to type in x square minus 3x cool it will form a parabola for you but if you want Desmos to treat this as a function and later play around with it, you can do that. You can type in F parentheses X and put an equal to sign. Nothing is going to change, but I mean, vis a -vis graph, of course, but a lot, a lot of things will be easier for you. Okay. Since we are talking about composite functions, so there is another function GX. Uh, so just type in the way it is looking in the question g of x is equal to f of 3x uh, let's say you do not really want to see the graphs uh, maybe it confuses you so you can unhide those and all you need is the value of g of let me just drop this thing down uh, all you need is the value of g of minus 10 so you plug in g parentheses minus 10 voila that's your answer because what Desmos did is plugged in minus 10 over here and realized that g of minus 10 is actually f of minus 30 and fx is already defined for you. So Desmos actually found the value of f of minus 30, which is same as g of minus 10 and it gave you the answer right away. See, no manual effort required here. I mean, at least the pen and paper effort. Uh, Desmos did everything for you here. All right, let's move ahead. Another question on uh, composite functions. So uh, this is f of x is equal to x square plus one. Uh, g of x is equal to x square minus one. They need the value of f of g of two. Guys, don't do anything. Just put it as it is because f and g are defined. So f parentheses g parentheses 2 that's your answer even if this is an frq for example because remember we are not reverse engineering anything right we are we are not even looking at the options so even if this question comes as an frq you 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 can very well answer this using desmos right accurate and time-saving method 
Uh, the next question which we have is uh, how to find the functional value uh, of any uh, of any uh, you know uh, uh, function so g of x for example is given over here as sin x plus cos x uh, i typed in sin x just by typing in sin from the keyboard uh, but if you not, are not a fan of that you can go on this functions option over here and prob uh, and I think uh, uh, most of the functions uh, you want to use are given over here. So you type in sign from here and then type in x. Uh, likewise, you can go on the cos as well, but I'm just gonna type cos x over here, put a whole square over here. So how I place the whole square from the keyboard, I put the hat symbol, I use the hat symbol, and then, so it went on the power, and then I just typed in two. Uh, like I said, if you insert an equation, right? So once we have uh, this written as a functional rotation, uh, functional notation, like I said, you can play around with it. Now, if you want to find the value of g of pi over three, just type in g of. For pi, I will just type in pi from the keyboard, and it will automatically convert into pi over three. Uh, of course, that is not in the option. Why? <laughs> because earlier we converted that in degrees. Now we got to go back, convert into radians. So the answer is 1.8, uh, about 1.87 or so, which is option C. All right, uh, another question on the functional value notation. So this is a little different, right? Guys, if you realize, uh, the earlier question was, having a function and finding the value at a particular x now this is about having a function and finding functional value at a uh, sorry fun, uh, finding the value of y at a particular uh, sorry finding the uh, finding the value of x as a at a particular value of y or the function so it's fine you don't really have to worry about that as well because we can still solve it using decimals you're just going to plug in function as it is and you are looking for uh, when fx is 4 or when fx minus 4 is equal to 0 right and remember avoid putting the equal to 0 sign except the linear functions so you're looking for x intercepts and your answer is uh, your answers are these two uh, they are looking for uh, positive value so 1.189 makes the cut i think because that is option b 1.19 all right uh, the next uh, uh, question which we have is on circles so uh, in this question uh, again we are going to type and type that in in decimals but you will realize one thing that if you will not put equal to sign uh, it may not recognize the equation uh, i'll just show it to you y square plus 6x plus 5y plus 45 over 4. See, it's giving you uh, a flag over here. So it's fine. I mean, you know, uh, Desmos will give you a flag that you have to add this into an equation and then only it will realize that's happening because there is a y square over here. So, I mean, no need to be confused. Uh, if you are putting an equal to sign, if you are getting a vertical bar, then don't put an equal to sign. If you're not putting an equal to sign and you're not good getting an, getting a graph in the first place, then start putting an equal to sign. So I think the Desmos will tell you, you know, uh, the way you have to play around with it. So I'm going to put equal to zero and there is my circle. And the best thing about this is it will automatically highlight, look at these, highlight the diametric end points for you. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on this as well. And don't you think I can easily figure out what is the distance between these two? Uh, this is at minus 0 0.5. This is at minus 4.5. So obviously the distance between these two points uh, is 4 and the half of 4 is 2. So that's what they're asking, right? What is the radius of the circle? So the radius of the circle is 2. Right, moving ahead, uh, another equation of the circle and they're asking radius of the circle. So 2x square, I think that's pretty easy for you. Plus 2x plus 2y square minus 10y minus 85 equal to zero. Uh, the reason why I pulled this question is, 
in the last question there were no x or y intercepts so the two points which were being highlighted were the diametric endpoints but here if you click on the circle see it is highlighting four points for you four points for you why because these two points are the x intercepts and do not confuse it with the diametric endpoints clearly these are not diametric endpoints because it you know seems to be tilted a little bit but diametric endpoints are these two right and what is the distance between these uh, this is at a height of because you can clearly see diametric endpoints should lie with the same x coordinate right uh, in this case because they are vertical so it makes absolute sense that uh, it's not like it's always going to happen but in this case since it is vertical so obviously x coordinates are same which makes sense so this is 9.5 units up 4.5 units down 9.5 plus 4.5 is 14 and they are asking the radius so the half of 14 is 7 because 14 is the diameter right so that's the answer all right location of a point for example in this question we are given that if a circle in the xy plane has the equation above then which of the following does not lie in the exterior on the exterior of the circle so the motive of this question is to tell you how to place a point uh, on desmos so i'm going to first put in the equation of the circle so x minus 2 whole square plus y plus 5 whole square is equal to 36 uh, we have a we have a circle over here now uh, i've seen some students making uh, uh, you know sliding this point and using a hit and trial kind of i'm not saying that's wrong but that sometimes takes some time so i'm a uh, i actually prefer to just plug in the options as points over here for example 2 comma 1 so put a parenthesis put 2 comma 1 and you can even label it click on the label and it will show you where the two comma one is and clearly that is on the circle right and they are looking for something which is not that does not lie on the exterior this does not lie on the exterior so that's point number one point number two is two comma five which is definitely lying in the exterior point number three is five comma two which is definitely lying in the exterior Point number four is minus one comma one, which definitely is lying in the uh, on the exterior. So point number A is the only point. Uh, option number A is the only option which is not lying in the exterior. It is lying on the circle, not in the exterior, not on the exterior. So that is the answer to this question. All right, uh, moving ahead. This is a word problem. Uh, uh, where uh, you can uh, this can be solved using calculus just in case you have an AP Calc AB background but obviously I'm assuming that this is SAT so it's not mandatory that you have it uh, so how to solve this using Desmos so the only catch in word problems is there's no equation right so that's that is actually a, a, a hybrid question where you have to do a little bit of manual work to find out the equation and then plug that into the decimals for example when a buffet restaurant charges 12 dollars per meal the number of meals it sells per day is 12 uh, is 400 all right now for each 0.5 dollar increase to the price per meal the number of meals sold per day decreases by a 10 so what is the price per meal that results in the greatest sales in dollars from meals each day first of all what is going to be the formula for the sales sales is obviously for example 12 dollar one meal 400 meals so what is the sale 12 dollar times 400 which is 4800 dollars right but uh, this is not how it's going to work because they are saying that this $12 meal is increased by 0 0.5. If increased by 0 0.5, the number of buyers or the number of customers from 400 decreases by 10. So something like this. This is the new revenue. Now they are saying that how many instances of such increase should be there so that the revenue reaches the maximum. So let's say this 0.5 increase is done x times. So obviously the decrease will obviously be done x times. 
and if you see this will form a graph for you this is a parabola and you are looking for the maximum value of sales which is the maxima of this parabola which is the vertex this is the maxima uh, Desmos will automatically highlight key points for you. For example, vertex, y-intercept, and the x-intercepts, you can see Desmos has already highlighted it for you. So 5,120 is the maximum revenue or the sales, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the price per meal. So is the answer eight? No, the answer is not eight, because eight is only the in value of x, but the total price of the meal is this entire thing. So what is this entire thing? Control C, Control V. What is this entire thing? If X is eight, it is sixteen dollars. So if the price is sixteen dollars, which is option A, that the number of the revenue of this particular restaurant is maximum. All right, moving ahead. This is our last question: How to find a mean and median? By the way, this is not an uh, old SAT question. I think I pulled it from a book, but this is a very good question. It's not like it cannot be asked in SAT. So they are saying that there is a quiz. There are there were seven quizzes. Uh, Jay appeared for it and scored the following. Then which of the following is true about the score? And there are some comments about the mode is greater than median, median is greater than mean, range is greater than twenty, so the so on. So uh, range is definitely the, just the maximum minus or minimum. So I'm not interested in that because this video is intended for Desmos, how to make the most out of Desmos. So you're going to go in this option, you're going to go in functions and you're going to type in mean over here. Now I need to, I need to find out mean, right? So just type in all the numbers, 87, 75, 90, 83, 98 87 and 91 there you go this is my mean and i need mode as well sorry median as well so go in the next line go in the functions type in median and don't really make the effort of arranging this in increasing order because desmos is going to do it for you i'm not even going to type i'm just going to select control c because it's the same data set control v clearly mean is greater than the median so option two is not right uh, I mean, statement two is not right, that the median is greater than mean. No, median is not greater than mean. So if uh, uh, statement two is wrong, I think the only statement left is a statement, uh, only option left is option B, right? Because two cannot be the answer. Uh, median is greater than mean, that's the wrong choice. So correct option is option B in this case. I'm not going to go in the mode and range because that's not uh, Desmos oriented. Uh, but if you still feel like you need help, then I just post it on in the comment section. All right, guys, this is it for this uh, video. I hope you learned something at least. And I'm quite sure that if you uh, start to apply this in your blue book mocks, in your offline mocks, wherever you are taking your help from, this is definitely going to increase your score and eventually give you some more time to crack a couple of more questions. Eventually, obviously, uh, uh, you, you will get closer to, if you are in low 600s, I'm pretty sure using these tricks can pump you to low 700s or even mid 700s. All right, guys, any questions, please post it down in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.